after 10 years of use for just 30 minutes a day were delete were not to be found. And then it w scientists looking at this realized that that was omitted when they were released. Um, also, the industry has stated that that study was flawed because the people who participated didn't recall how long they used their cell phone. I and the other victims have been able to get cell phone records to determine how long it was used. They are the cell phone industry that funded the study, and I would imagine they'd have the same ability. Um, as far as federal preemption, the Attorney General in Maine said this was absolutely not federal, federally preempted. The same in California, the same in San Francisco. So I think what he, um, Mr. Keegan is referring to is some class action suit about headphones for people that, that there were no injuries involved. Um, I don't know what's going on with that, but I do know that this generally has, is not federally preempted. Um, as far as brain tumors on the rise, our registry is way behind. I've heard that it's about five years behind. It's age adjusted. It's a mess. Um, I do, he also did mention the UK, which is interesting because I do have a chart with me. Age specific incident rates for England for malignant temporal and frontal lobe, frontal lobe tumors. And they are on the rise in the UK, despite what Mr. Keegan has said. Um, Um, there, are, there is a cardiologist by the name of Dr. Sinatra who's done research on this, and he does suggest that you do not keep them in the front pocket because they do interfere with the heart. And pacemakers, people with pacemakers are always warned not to keep a cell phone near their heart. Uh, okay, let's see what else we've got here. Um, as far as the 50-fold factor that Mr. Keegan referred to, um, that was set back in 1982 for RF safety standards. That's before cell phones were even introduced to the marketplace. That 50-fold standard is not related to sources held close to the body, such as cell phones, and that's a quote from Dr. Om Gandhi. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Keegan quotes the NCI, the NIH, and many other organizations and agencies that we, as the general public, hold in high esteem, but it has been determined by experts that they have been, I, the word is, captured by this industry. Um, the main CDC director, who I have met, um, has been asked to or forced to step down from her position. Mr. Keegan was quoting her. Um, the lawsuits, um, there are more than four. There's many ongoing lawsuits, and they did take a good step forward just a couple of months ago. And um, before Sam was introduced, the large head, um, there were human beings that were testing these, and one of the, hum one of the men who did this, Robert Kane, wrote a book about it, and he passed away from a brain tumor. Um, Mr. Snowden is another CTIA vice president, and when he testified in Burlingame, California, who is now going to be doing something with this, he stated he is not saying once, not once, that cell phones are safe. So I think that the CTIA might be saying that, maybe it was just Mr. Snowden, but they're referring to the FCC and FDA who are, are mis mistakenly misleading the public. Um, and also, as far as pregnant women, there are new studies coming out of Turkey and Greece and um, Israel about cell phone effect on fetuses. And there is one um, family who lost a four-year-old to a glioma. It's very rare for a child to have a glioma. And she was a realtor, and she kept her cell phone in her pocket while she was pregnant. And the doctors have talked to her about the fact that this possibly may have been related to her cell phone use while she was pregnant. Um, and that is it. And I thank you. We did have a short video that we wanted to play. But I think what we're going to have to do is maybe move the laptop over here and just show it. To, since there's only a few of you, you'll be able to. And this is um, just a few of the other victims and then a couple of other doctor statements, expert statements. I'm sorry the projector's not working. Thank you. Oh, I want, I, yeah, thank you. <laughs> if anybody else wants to see, you can feel free to.
fortunate issue of more profound warnings uh, would be up where cell phones uh, are either being sold or in the package that you know, the person buys it. I don't, I should not need a magnifying, magnifying glass to find it. And I should not have to, based on how I use my cell phone, I know there's a lot of features on my cell phone that I'm not even aware of because I didn't buy it. Me too. I want to know how to make a telephone. And now I'm learning how to text. But, and I do a lot of that now. So many people do get right, pick it up, charge it back, whatever they have to do, and now they're using it. Okay. And what, my, what the therapist said about, I didn't even know about that. That I ain't supposed to use it while I'm charging the phone. I mean, those, those are scary warnings that are that are um, that are being released. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to have to read fine print to notice stuff. So it's important that people are informed in a very effective way up front for they so they can make good choices and protect themselves from harm's way. And it might not limit their cell phone use, but it might encourage good, safe cell phone use practices. So I'm happy that you came forward with you. what you added to this hearing today. Thank you. But we need a different level of government who's responsible for consumer protection to get involved in this now. And I know you brought up the CDC, and you know, that's one. But I, I think the Attorney General, Surgeon not, General. not just no, the Surgeon General, not the Attorney General, the Surgeon General, to, to be asked to get involved with this too. And I don't know if any of you had any indication that that had been asked of, of, of that double um, I'm not entirely certain about the Surgeon General. We did have a, a uh, Environmental Health Trust um, conference in Jackson, Wyoming recently. And we are approaching the FCC and some interested um, people at the federal level such as um, Representative Markey, Representative Eshoo, and Representative Waxman who are interested in this. However, they're more interested in research. And I think that research, we have a lot of research, and there's a lot already known. And I think actually the industry might be happy with, with more research because it takes years. And then as we have seen, they have spin doctors that can put the spin on any good research. So in answer to your question, I will find out more about the Surgeon General. I do know that at the federal level, though, this is, it's very, very hard to get anything done. And that just like with secondhand smoke, it seems that this is going to have to start at the state and local levels. So I appreciate your, I will check on that Surgeon General idea, though. That, that might be a good one. Right. Right. My daughter, like I'm sure a lot of daughters and sons, know how to use cell phones better than we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and I don't know if they learn it while my mommy's pregnant or what, but, but, but they come out knowing this stuff very early. Very early. And Blackberries and other electronic devices too. So You're right. No, I, that, that's an interesting idea, and I will talk to the others about the Surgeon General, and maybe Dr. Herberman, know, Herberman knows more about that. You know, I think all in all we need to take into account that we can have this ongoing debate about science for years and years and years going forward. However, if you come away with one thing today, it's that the FCC is mandating that that language be in there because of the way these phones are tested and people are not seeing that up front. And that is the important thing that I don't think anybody here can argue. Thank you. Any other questions? Right, but have you ever have you read your have you seen this before? No, I See, most read. people and some of I mean, Dr. Herberman was saying that someone just he knows just bought one and it didn't even come with it. A lot of times, 
when we go to get our new phones, you know, I just, they take it out of the box, they put the SIM card on, I say, throw the box away. And if I wasn't in the know, I definitely wouldn't ask for the manual. And sometimes they're not even given with the phones, they're only online. So, and they're hard, it's hard to find. So it's definitely not something, I mean, the fonts, even in gray, it's something they're not wanting us to see for some reason. They don't even use it in their advertisement. I mean, even the pharmaceutical companies have been made to talk about side effects as well. Right. So if it, if they, even in the advertisement, when they sell these phones, these booster phones, and these, all these electronic devices, they don't mention anything in the advertisement about read the warning label or anything associated with harmful use to the cell phone. That's not answered too much with a, with a business that went from 100 million customers to 300 million customers. Right. I'm quite sure that they can afford to do this. So well, I'm very disturbed. You're absolutely right, and like I stated in my testimony, not only are they doing that, but you read the black of the black, back of the BlackBerry manual, it says limit your use, and it tells you to keep it almost an inch away from the body, and like I said, the advertisement says keep your friends in your pocket. This is quite contradictory and misleading to the general public. Thank you. I'm still concerned about the women and children mm -hmm. aspect, pregnant children, mm -hmm. um, pregnant um, mothers. I know as a mom, one day, and this is, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I, uh, my son is in a room, and I decided I needed to punish him. And I said, come here. And he came to the kitchen table. I said, empty out your pockets, because I was just going to take the cell phone away. Well, he started emptying out his pockets, two cell phones. I didn't even know he had a second one. Hit the table, um, a PSP, and a couple other devices in his pocket. And I know the PSP has wire, it's a game, but it has wireless, you can, if you can get it, someone with a signal, you can pull up a signal and you can play other people. And I had no idea as a parent that my child had all of these devices in his pocket. So I said, where did all this stuff come from? Oh, well, Uncle Cliff brought me this and Papa brought me that and my dad brought me. So I'm thinking I'm controlling his environment because I have only brought one item, but forgetting that now children have access to so much. And that is what is really and truly driving me. And to see your conviction as a mom and as a wife, you know, to protect your husband and your family, I commend you for that. And I thank, thank you for you. flying from California oh, to, to Pennsylvania. My pleasure. To help us fight for Pennsylvanians um, in, the, in this, you know, just educating a consumer. And to me, this is about education, empowerment, so that people know what their options are. And if you get in a car, like Representative Water says, and you choose to drive without your seatbelt, there has been so much education out there now that people know the dangers and they know they're taking a risk, even though they still take it. But they are now informed consumers. And that's what this is all about, is informing the consumer so that they know what, what their responsibility would be, and especially as parents, for us to know our responsibility to our children. So I want to thank you for being mm -hmm. a partner here today. I'm going to tell you, I have a GPS device. In my right, car. I have that too. And when I turn it on, it tells you, do not use this device while you're driving. Before you can move, putting in information, you have to read it out. So it gives you a level of warning every time you turn that device on. So I don't have one that would go to the car. I don't know if one that the car has that same warning or not. But warning, does. <laughs> you understand why they give you those warnings. Right. Yeah, uh, I'm very uh, concerned about concentrated uh, exposure. We're in the car together. We drive. We have Representative Bishop is in the car. We have Frank Oliver in the car with us. We all have our devices. Everyone is on the phone at the same time. We oh, have the no. GPS is on. Okay. You know, I'm, no, I'm, you're, you're not driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually. The I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, and yes, the concern. There's a great concern about children and their lifetime of exposure. And also, I'm, interested, I'm glad that you brought up the thing about the car. Many of the people, the victims that I know, and believe me, there's a lot more than what you saw there, had long-term use, and a lot of it was in an automobile. And you do get more radiation when you're driving in the cell phone tower, sending out a spike every so often, and you're enclosed in a steel case. And, and there has been some talk now about secondhand radiation. Going down the turnpike, I can tell you that there's times when we know we drop signals certain mm -hmm. places. And I can feel, if I have this up to my ear, I felt a pop 
in my and I know you felt it too. When we get to those areas where it's really trying hard to pull the signal, and I said, "Ooh, you know, what was that?" So, um, you know, I believe education is the best way for everything. This is about people being able to make informed choices at point of sale. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Truly appreciate thank this. You. Thank you for your testimony, and I want to thank everyone who testified today. Also. Uh, special thanks to Representative Brown for bringing this to our attention and uh, asking for this hearing today. So thank you. That'll conclude our hearing.